everyone. Welcome back. Andy and I are going to have a conversation today about the teeth. This is a question that we get a lot. You know, what do you do with, with cavities and kids with cavities? What's the biological conflict? What do I need to do to fix this? Do I need a root canal? Are root canals hurting me? And so we're going to get into that topic today. So Andy, tell us about um, the dentin. Yes, it's and this is such great information. And I would just want to point out that why we're talking about this now is because I just broke a tooth, um, what, less than two weeks ago. So I've been through this little dental journey in the past two weeks. And so it's like, oh, let's talk about teeth. So we are. So the dentin and the jawbone are in the same program. They're controlled by the cerebral medulla. It's new brain mesoderm. And what that means is that there is cell loss in the conflict active phase and then cell replenishment in the PCL phase. And what's interesting is what the actual conflict is because it's not being able to bite or snap, not being able to bite back. And so and it's because you're in a weaker position, you've got a boss and you really want to say something really nasty to them and you can't, I mean, you could, but you know, you shouldn't. It's more that type of thing, which is a little different from the enamel program. Melissa, you want to tell us about that one and then we'll kind of compare the two. Yeah, so with the enamel, this has to, this is a cerebral cortex program. And so the biological purpose, the meaning of it occurs during the active conflict. And this is not being allowed to bite. Like you wanna growl, you wanna snap, you wanna show your teeth, but you're not allowed to. So maybe you're you're the teacher and you wanna <laughs> say something to the student and you're just your positions make it so you're not allowed to do it. And so during that active phase, there is erosion of the enamel. And that's when you'll have tooth pain because your body's trying to say, hey, don't you don't want to do this. You don't want to show your teeth in this situation. And so that's the biological purpose. And so the the enamel is controlled from the cerebral cortex. There's loss of enamel during the active conflict. And the whole purpose is active during the conflict active phase. So I, what I find interesting is that it's mostly kids that have the enamel cavities and it's mostly the adults that have dentin cavities. Very interesting. So, yes. Like, and you, and you but, see children who are breastfed and they're eating well and they're like, my kids aren't eating sugar, but their teeth are, are black or they've got, you know, uh, erosion. Yeah. And so you've got to look at what's the dynamic in the family? What's going on here? What are they being told that they can't do? You know, what's, are there fights between the parents where the child wants to intervene, but they can't. And so you want to look at all of those dynamics, especially, you know, I know it can be very disconcerting for parents who are doing everything right nutritionally. They're trying to brush the little teeth and they're like, what, are, what am I doing wrong? It's simply that that child is experiencing a biological conflict. And so you have to start looking at that dynamic to see, you know, what's going on here? Why is this child feeling like they want to snap, they want to bite, but they are not allowed to. Right. That's so important. And I just find that fascinating. I look at the number of people who come to me with dental issues and it, it's a lot, right? You probably have a lot of folks as well. And so you look at the dynamics in, these are usually dentin because it's adults. You, you look at the dynamics in the marriage. What's going on in that marriage? How can they not respond to their spouse or they're not able to in a, in a way that it works for them? Let's look at the different kinds of teeth. And I want to show the picture. We don't have really super accurate information in English yet, but um, here is the book in German that Dr. Hammer wrote. And here's a picture of, this is German and I can't read it, but here you can at least see every single tooth has a different meaning. And someday we'll have this translated. In general, you know, the different teeth have different meanings because different teeth do different things, right? Conflicts are always related to the functioning of that organ or tissue. Also, interesting about that is the whole, you know, oh, it's bacteria. Well, why is it that two teeth right next to each other, <laughs> one tooth has it, clearly the bacteria would be affecting both teeth. So why would one tooth be decaying and the other one be perfectly fine if it was simply bacteria because you ate too much sugar and didn't brush your teeth enough? Exactly. And that, that whole sugar thing is such a good one. So let's touch on this really quickly. So is sugar a, a healthy substance for us? No. So we know that it's something that weakens the body. So the weaker that we are, the more apt we are to have conflict shocks. 
So if you have a lot of sugar in your body, in your teeth, in your mouth all the time, then yeah, things are going to be weaker. It's not going to cause cavities. However, you are going to have be more apt to experience a bite conflict because that area of your body isn't strong and robust. It's weak. And if you have it in your head, <laughs> I know that I have had bite conflicts because I'm like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. This is bad for my teeth. This is, you know, the sugar, it's, it's a, that strong association between the sugar is bad. We eat the sugar anyways, but then when we feel bad about it, we devalue ourselves. I'm unable to bite this. I wish I could bite this, but I can't, I'm not allowed to, but I do it anyways. And now my tooth hurts. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I think that's a really good point that we say this, it is kind of a self-devaluation conflict. So really be aware of how am I devaluing myself or how is my child devaluing him or herself? Important to look at. The teeth, yeah. we've got the incisors. So tell us about the incisors, those front teeth. Those front teeth. So think about it for a second. What do we do with our front teeth? I wish I had an apple here, you know, we're going to bite into like an apple. And so we bite and cut our food as well. And so the conflict associated with the incisors would be not being allowed to bite, to snap at some, to show one's teeth. What do animals do in the wild? <sighs> right? They growl and they show teeth. So it's going to be threatening. That means that we've got an issue with those things if we have a cavity in one of those. Tell us about the canines, Melissa. Yes, yeah, so the canines, and this is just very interesting because again, you have to kind of think of this biological animalistic sort of snatching something away to, to snatch at a person, to rip something away or to take it back. Uh, and, and think, you know, a child wanting to snatch away a toy from, you know, their big brother or from someone like this. Rah! So that's what's going to affect the, the canine teeth. Yes. And then the last ones are the molars. What do we do with our molars? <laughs> right, right. We're grinding, we're crushing, we're chewing our food with them. And so we're not able to crunch. We can't grind up an opponent. We want to we want to grind them up and spit them out. This is so bad. Whatever is happening to me in this moment with this person, grind them up, spit them out. So and we can't. Yeah. Yep. And you have to look yeah. at these, you know, these situations where you're like, all right, you know, I've got several cavities in my mouth right now. Every time I go to the dentist, I know I'm in for it. I know they're going to tell me you've got like eight cavities. I'm like, I know I'm, I'm well aware that, and, but I haven't had any pains or aches in several years. And so I know specifically the person, the situation that incites within me, this wanting to grind up but I'm not able to do it because of the dynamics and yep. there's that holding back. And I know whenever I get a little ache in that too, I know it's been, I know exactly what the conflict was that flared it up. And so where I'm at right now, and we kind of wanted to get into like, what do you do as far as dental care? You know, I like to go and have a teeth cleaning. That's a really, you know, lovely experience, <laughs> no fluoride, <laughs> but as far as like the, the dentist and they're going to say, oh, you need this. We need to drill. Oh, it's getting bad. That's one of the things that I, I hate about <laughs> the dynamic is someone leaning over you and saying, and them going, hmm, on the paper. And, and it's like this whole experience where I'm like, I know that they're there, but I also know that the biological program is under control, that I'm at a point where I know that there are holes in it. I know that you're going to see cavities and that you're going to want to fill them, but I'm at the point where I don't want to have them filled. I don't want to have it drilled and go through that whole process because it's stable. Because I understand the triggers for this conflict. I know when it's active. I know when I get a little toothache, that indicates that my body is going through the process again. And so I'm personally fine with the fact that I have seven or eight cavities in my mouth. I'm currently not doing anything about it. Okay. Yay. I wanted to just applaud you. And I'm in the same boat, although I don't know that I have many cavities because I'm um, I'm one who does not go to the dentist. I actually worked for dentists for several years when I was younger and kind of um, learned a lot and realized, okay, this isn't a place for me. I'm just one of those people. So I've been to the dentist twice in 40 years. I'll be honest. And the second time was just last week, you know, and so it was super recent. The last time before this was 20 years. I keep track of my teeth. I know if I have a sensitivity, then hot and cold bothers me. Then I know, okay, I'm in the conflict active phase of an enamel conflict. So I need to 
I need to look and see what was this all about. I figure it out and I resolve it. And then pretty soon it's like, oh, that hurts a little bit. And pretty soon it's gone. So that's what I do. Now, the fact that I broke a piece off, this was my molar that I broke off and I didn't want to live without my molar. And I, it's a molar I've been thinking for the past few years, I really should go to a dentist and just, I just want to get an x-ray. I just want to see what's going on. And I haven't. And of course now I did. Um, there was no cavity. It's like, I am astonished. It's been sensitive. And yet there was no cavity, he said. Okay. So what do we do? What does anyone do if they start to track their conflict active phases and healing phases? That's important to do. One thing I'm going to mention is there's lots of books out there on how to heal your teeth naturally. And please know that it can take a long time. This isn't something like, oh yeah, I've got um, a cavity. I'll fix it in two weeks. You know, I'll finish this whole program in two weeks. You won't. It takes a while to fill in, right? Because this is hard. Right? It's hardened bone, basically. So I'm going to mention this book here, Tooth Decay. I'm not saying it's the number one book to get. It's just an example. And it talks about a Weston A. Price diet, which is very rich in minerals, which is what you need because our teeth need minerals. What do you recommend, Melissa? I actually, uh, several pre-GNM, I went on this, oh, I'm going to fix my teeth. And I got all this like remineralizing powder and I started taking, you know, liver supplements and yeah, rich in minerals, um, doing a lot of oil pulling. And so I think that those are lovely supportive things to do, like having a, a nice routine where you are, you know, feeling good about taking care of your teeth and getting, you know, good. So several years back, pre-GNM, I, I went on a journey of like, okay, the stuff from that book, how do I fix my teeth? What do I need to take? You know, remineralizing powder and oil swishing. And uh, I started taking liver supplements and all sorts of things rich in minerals, because, you know, that is important to have proper nutrients and proper minerals so that your body is abundantly sufficient so that it can maximize the, the restoration process. But also knowing, like you said, it's a slow process. I'm not expecting overnight results. I'm in it for the long haul. <laughs> My main goal really is to be aware of that snapping, biting, grinding sensation. And a lot of people that I've worked with, it's, it can be very ingrained. And especially if it, you know, is affecting your jaw, if you have your gums affected, the periodontal apparatus that kind of holds the tooth in place, all of that, you know, if you're at a stage where it's gotten advanced and then just the presence and like the sensitivity of the tooth can create a chronic cycle where it's hard to bite and that's difficult. And so just know that, yes, it can be hard. What would you say is a situation where a person would consider, you know, like an, an implant or an extraction? Because I know yeah. that people are like, do I get a, do I get a root canal? What do I do if it's gotten to a point where it's so decayed that I can't bite, I can't do anything, I can hardly eat until there's some sort of intervention? Right. So if we know that that program has been going on for a long, long time, and you might be at a point where it's like, okay, this really isn't viable that it's going to replenish. And so you might want to look at an extraction. And I know nobody wants to hear that, but I'm going to say it's better than a root canal. I would not ever do a root canal. That's not in my future at all. I would simply pull it and perhaps do an implant, something that would be a safer metal that would be more biodynamic for my body. So that's yeah, what I would do. It's a personal decision for sure. And on the note of root canals, I did want to mention this because prior to GNM, um, I was under the impression that root canals have some association with cancer. And I just kind of want to walk you through the ideology behind that and how it's different. When you understand GNM, you understand the biological meaning of cancer. You're no longer thinking of it as a, an immune system deficiency. So my understanding or how I was taught that, so you have a root canal. And so inevitably with the root canal, they never get all the decaying tooth out. And so the idea there is that there's constantly bacteria being exposed to your bloodstream, which is causing a constant activation of the immune system. And the idea is that that constant activation of the immune system causes depletion, which, you know, in that mindset, the, the cancer cells are simply the body doing something wrong and that the immune system needs to kill the cancer cells. And if the immune system is low, it can't do it. Therefore, you could have increased rates of cancer. So the association 
And so someone who say has a lot of root canals and also has cancer, it wouldn't be that a lot of root canals causes the cancer because of immune system depletion. A person with a lot of root canals, that tells me they've got a lot of conflict, you know, that they have had a bite conflict for a long time. And so they are prone to certain types of biological conflicts. Their emotional threshold is probably lowered because they've been wanting to bite, wanting to snap back at someone for a really long time. Who knows that person they want to snap at or bite at could be also one of the root causes of the conflict with the cancer somewhere else in their body. And so that we really want to look at cancer is a biological program. It's not an error of the immune system. And so kind of getting that idea and looking at, oh gosh, I've been thinking that my root canals, I need to fix it, or I can't get this because it causes cancer. You can put that idea to the side when you understand that not everybody who has a root canal has cancer. And that's one of the things, like if, if it's not every single person, we have to look at the unique individual, what all they were going through. So this person had a lot of bite conflicts, and then they're also having other conflicts affecting other organ systems. I'm so glad you mentioned that. So talking about chronic bite issues, one thing that I think GNM really helps us with is learning communication skills. Because if we have a bite conflict, we're holding back. We are not able to communicate effectively. And I think stepping up to the plate and really gathering information on how do I say this in a way where it can be heard is really important. So learning communication skills any way that you can is really important. And then practicing them. Practice them as much as you can. If you have that feeling that you want to bite back and you just can't in that moment, go grab an apple and bite, 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 <laughs> bite into that apple and just do the process. Even though you're not saying words to a person, you're doing the process and your psyche is hearing you. So when you're biting that apple, think about what you would say to that person and bite it and bite it and bite it really well. And then chew it, chew it, chew it, grind it up and then swallow it or spit it out if you want to be done with that person. That's great. And that's how, you know, GNM really is. It's a, it's a window into personal growth. Where do I need to grow? What do I, what skills do I need to develop in order to have clear communication? And it, and it really is so cool how the five biological laws really just give you this window into the areas you need to grow instead of stewing about it and being so mad and wishing you would have said this and said that and staying up all night and just grind, you know, even like teeth grinding and, and jaw yeah. issues. That also has to do with wanting to snap at, wanting to bite, not being able to say, you know, what you want to say to a person. And so look at, is it the right jaw? Is it the left? You know, yeah. who are you right or left dominant? What's going on with these relationships? And if you are grinding and you're having either lock jaw issues, you really want to look at where do I need to work on this communication skill? Do I need that person to be different or do I need to be different? And working on yourself and doing like Andy said, like, what can I do to process this to, to feel as though I'm expressing myself, even if I'm afraid that if I actually say it to that person, I will lose them or something bad will happen. You can work on this on your own, even without another person's cooperation, which is awesome. Right. You absolutely can. And I want to just point out that the bruxism, the teeth grinding is an epicrisis at night. And that's often when it occurs. And you probably are having a dream about that person as you are grinding. So you can certainly do a little you know, ritual at night about, you know, blessing your dream time and letting it be peaceful and knowing that you can easily work through your issues without having to grind the teeth at night. So that's where what you do during the day can affect your nighttime experience. So I want to mention that, you know, GNM is such an entirely different paradigm. And I want to start saying GHK as well. GHK, GNM is such an, a new paradigm. I met a dentist who knows German new medicine. He lives in South America. And I would say he's like the most unconventional dentist I've ever heard of in my life. Uh, we had an extensive several conversations because what he presented was that he does not tell his patients to brush their teeth. He does not recommend flossing. He has not brushed or flossed in years. <laughs> yes, this is a dentist. And he was very much a proponent that our body knows exactly what to do. And so if somebody came to him and said, I have a cavity, I want it filled. He had other people in his practice. He was in a practice with his uncle and family members. He would send them out. He would not even fill a cavity. 
and he would instruct them on this is what's going on and why and just take care of yourself. What we also know is when you look at the Weston A. Price information, this is a dentist who toured the world. He looked at indigenous people eating indigenous foods, living an indigenous lifestyle, and they didn't have cavities. They had no tooth decay. They did not have crookedness or overbites or underbites. They had perfectly formed very wide jaws and perfectly formed teeth. They were eating wonderful foods, yes, but they lived in a community that there wasn't a lot of conflict. And if they had conflict, they were able to resolve them easily. So we look at all of this information thinking, okay, maybe how we're living our lives right now isn't really ideal. And how can we get back to that kind of ideal arrangement in our lives? Obviously, a whole society of that is going to take many years to create. However, we can start doing it as individuals, I think. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> I want to meet this dentist. That's fascinating. But yeah, yeah. I think that and we are going to have more conversations about this and, you know, traditional types of societies where how do you communicate with children? Are children being heard? Is there a lot of fighting in the home? You know, when societies, civilizations that were just thriving, and their original land, eating foods from that land, their, their communities were arranged in such a way where, yeah, conflict was minimal. Then you look at today, I mean, everybody, <laughs> braces, orthodontics, tooth issues, it is so common. I mean, the whole dental yeah. industry, it's a huge thing, just like the medical industry. And what is it a result of? People with chronic lifelong conflicts, there's so much that we do that is just not ideal for our biology. And so we have to think about the these biological programs, they developed a very long time ago when our lifestyles were very, very different and we weren't exposed to constant 24 seven news. People didn't work and live far from their homes. There wasn't as much being away from your family. And so, yeah, I mean, just taking that into account and how can we bridge that gap between the, the great cool things about living in the modern world, but also the things that are missing from a more kind of small traditional sorts of communities. I think there's a way to do it. And I think that that's kind of our mission right now is to figure out how can I bring in the this kind of ancient wisdom, these ancient lifestyles to the modern world in a way that minimizes conflict and helps us to be more self-aware, more communicative, to diminish the, the number of conflicts that we and our children experience? Perfect. Absolutely. And so let's talk to the people who are watching this, who are thinking, well, I'm thinking I should go to the dentist. You know, what do I do? How do I do this? How do I work on all this? And I'm going to say, if you're going to go to a dentist, which there are times when it's good to do so, like Melissa has already said, she goes and gets her teeth cleaned. Perfect. She gets an idea of what's going on. I think that's great information to have. So make sure you find a biological dentist, not someone that's just fairly holistic, but somebody who's a biological dentist and doesn't use mercury in their office. And there's quite a few of those out there now, which is fabulous. Also understand what's going on from a GNM perspective so that you can start to kind of chart and get a handle on when you're conflict active and when you're in the healing phase. If you're in a major healing phase, reach out to someone who knows GNM because we do have some support for you that can be helpful in a PCL phase. One thing that was taught to me was that if we can withstand the pain of a toothache, a toothache is periosteum. There's a lot of nerve endings there. So it's really, really painful. And if you've ever had a, a major toothache, it's super, super uncomfortable. If you can withstand that and get through it, your tooth is healing. And so if you can withstand the pain, you will get through this and your tooth will heal. It will be okay. We get freaked out. It's like, oh no, it's, it's really painful. I can't do this. What do I do to take it? What do I take to get rid of the pain? So if basically, if you can make it through the pain and reach out to a GNM consultant to get some help with that, then know that your tooth is healing. And so hang in there if you're able to versus getting a root canal, getting it pulled or anything that's a bit more drastic. 
Yes. And just knowing that, knowing that and reframing the pain and understanding that pain comes after resolution. What did I just resolve, especially, you know, with the dentin, you know, with the enamel, it is different. That is when you have the sensitivity, but with those, those molars that are aching, if you can make it through that, just trust my body is healing. This is restoring my, my body knows exactly what it's doing. And yeah. And then reach out if you do need support and if you want to have it pulled, you know, just make those decisions from a place of confidence rather than a place of fear. Don't let the dentist or anyone kind of push you around and scare you because that it's fear that increases pain. It's going to cause, you know, you to hold on to water, increase the, the pressure and the fluid buildup. And so Try to stay calm, understand the biological program. And yeah, just know that the teeth are responding to your experience. And, uh, and yeah, that is this, this wisdom, this information, the Germanic healing knowledge. It is every person needs to understand how their teeth work from this point of view. Yes. So we hope this has been a helpful video for you. We're very glad that you joined us and we look forward to seeing you in the next video that we create. Bye. Bye-bye.